episode 284 on Monday the 21st of April 2014. I am your host Stephen Layton. Welcome to In My Mug and welcome back to the news. So a little, uh, little bit of news for this week is this week we're going to be doing uh, an African, a Tanzanian, and it's from the Burka estate. But we also have another lot from the estate uh, that won't be in my mug, and it's called uh, Burka Block A Catimor Natural. Um, it is one that if you want to try, you'll have to buy separately. That's especially for you, Roland. And we also have another Tanzanian from the neighbouring farm, which is called Selian. Um, and we're going to be doing one of the lots next week. But uh, the one that we won't be doing is Block C Bourbon N39 Natural. Um, so uh, that is also for you, Roland. And I'm going to Seattle next week at the SCAA. And I am very excited because I'm going to MC the US Barista Championships. Um, it is a lifelong dream of mine to do. It may mean that this comes out not quite the same time as normal. Bear with me. Um, yeah, there's a lot to do between him here and me going to Seattle next week, but uh, anyway, that was the news! So it's time for Focus On, and as I've already said that the coffee this week is from Tanzania, so it seems only right that we focus on Tanzania. So focus on, we're going to look at the Tanzanian coffee industry. Um, Tanzania is the 19th largest, 19th largest producer of coffee in the world. In 2006, Tanzania produced over 55 million pounds of coffee beans um, and exports brought in $60 million um, each year to the Tanzanian economy. Uh, coffee was first introduced into uh, Tanzania by the German colonization people um, um, and this one is no different that we're going to be doing this week. Uh, firmly cultivated as a cash crop, um, the Germans used coffee as a way of weakening the tribal leaders by introducing this place of work and taking away the power from the leaders. Um, between 1905 and 1912, uh, Tanzanian coffee exports increased nearly threefold. Again, the farm that we're going to be doing this week is part of why that happened. Um, following World War II, uh, the German colonies were broken up. So like Rwanda was given to the Belgians and Tanzania was given to the British. Um, and um, we kind of did some good stuff there. We kind of improved the quality of the plants, uh, improved, the, improved the exports. Um, and uh, yeah, we kind of, did a better job um, than the Germans, which is, I can't believe. Um, the coffee growers of Tanzania were some of the first to produce co uh, cooperatives and kind of work together. Um, approximately 70% of coffee produced in Tanzania is Arabica, um, with most of it grown in the high altitude re regions such as Mount Kilimanjaro, like this one. Do you see where I'm going this week? I've been kind of, yeah. Um, most of the Robusta is grown near Lake Victoria at much lower altitudes. Um, and most of Tanzanian's coffee is grown by uh, people with less than five acres. In fact, 95% of the coffee is grown by producers with five acres or less. Kind of like what we've talked about in uh, Colombia. And that was Focus On. So interesting, I think you'll agree. So uh, this coffee comes from the uh, Arusha, uh, the Armunia district of the northern Tanzania, uh, on the lower slopes of Mount Miru, which you will see on the map bit. Um, Mount Miru goes as high as 4,500 metres above sea level. Uh, Arusha's town centre is approximately, well, was approximately eight kilometres from uh, these, the two farms that we bought these coffees from. But over recent years, again, you'll see on the map bit, the urban sprawl has meant that the town has expanded right to the very borders of the farm. It is a big, big, busy town. Um, I didn't realize quite how big it was until I started doing the, the map bit. Uh, Berka was founded originally in 1899 by a German settler uh, by the name of Mr. Rahn, um, who decided to plant coffee to send back to his native Germany. Uh, Berka covers 1,437 acres of which 870 um, are coffee. Uh, the neighbouring estate is Selian, which we'll be looking at next week, and is owned by the same group. Um, the two estates combined have around about 200 permanent staff, um, and they're also on top of that 200 casual staff at the peak of the harvest. 
Um, and it has been known that they've got as high as 5,000 staff involved in the picking and processing during the very, very height of the harvest. Um, all the staff that live on the farm are provided with housing um, and they have four different separate areas uh, for each of the uh, estates. Um, the thing I liked when I kind of looked into it was that the minimum salary is set 20% above the minimum wage. So, you know, they're paying a little bit more so they get better better workers. And they also have um, a social security and labor union um, uh, and membership is included in their contracts. Um, they also have a credit union so they can borrow loans in a more constructive way than just borrowing from loan sharks and things. Um, they also, uh, there's a constant program of house construction to improve uh, the farm and also uh, a program of healthcare for people on the farm. Uh, it also has its own nursery which educates around about 100 children um, every day and they have two primary schools that educate over 600 children uh, from both estates. Uh, and from the neighbouring communities, they kind of let people come in from outside if they have spaces and they're able to do it. Um, the healthcare, uh, they have a, a nurse that's always there. They have uh, a pharmacy um, and they have it, their own ambulance, which I, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how dangerous it is they're picking coffee, but uh, they have their own ambulance. They also have like the social things, so they have shops, they have churches, they have a mosque. Um, uh, and they use their facilities, uh, so they, the, the sports facilities, they have football pitches and they have inter-estate uh, football matches and netball matches. Um, they have barbecues where the two estates get together. Um, so I think they kind of have like this rivalry, but they kind of um, uh, still kind of get along with each other, which is really cool. Um, workers are also supplied with firewood uh, from uh, you know, stumped coffee trees and there's also nut and fruit trees all around the estates. Um, so yeah, that's the farm. The coffee itself, then this is the first time I think I've ever, well, this is the first time I've ever seen a natural come out of Tanzania. Um, and this was a micro experiment with our exporter friends that we've been talking to over the last couple of years about we'd love to see a natural come out. Um, so what they did, they, the ripe cherries would be picked and within six hours delivered to the mill where they're hand sorted by colour and then placed on aged, raised uh, African or Indian uh, raised beds um, and uh, dry over a three week period and um, yeah this is the first time that they've done it yes you can find tanzanians that have been naturally processed in the past but they tend to be um uh poor quality not very tasty nasty so anyway we should go and do roland's daft fact of the week is home of the coconut crab. It is said to be the world's largest and most delicious crab. Ooh, I do like crab. Yes, this crab can be found uh, on Chumba Island in Zanzibar. Uh, why Roland is talking about seafood, I have no idea. Um, but anyway, we should brush over that rather quickly and go to the funky, amazing, very exciting map bit. I miss my song. I'm going to sing it now while this is going up. It's the map, but no expense spent. Which is a lie because there's loads of expense spent now on all these flashy graphics. But there we are up to the earth and we are going south and we're going to Africa. The huge, massive, monstrosity large uh, Africa. And we're going down to the very large Tanzania, um, which looks quite bare because we don't have many Tanzanian coffees and haven't. But Tanzania has the largest concentration of wild animals per square kilometre than anywhere else. I think it's, I, I read something like 4,000 like different types of animal. It's crazy. It's, so we're going down here and this is the farm. So Berka is below uh, and Selena is there. But look, so that is Mount Muru. And just in the far background, um, we'll, we'll go back there in a minute, which is the Kilimanjaro. He's 5,895 metres. Um, at the lowest point is the Indian Ocean. So we can, uh, let's go up to that highest point, I think. Let's whiz around this. Look at this. So that's Muru there. And you can see the farm still. So that's the very top. But then if we just take a jump back, 
that is the top of Kilimanjaro. And that is, uh, you still see the farms just in the distance there. It's absolutely gorgeous that you can see the farms from Kilimanjaro. And just have a look at Kilimanjaro. You can see there it is just in the background. And you are amongst the trees at that point. So there's a, an, another upward view down to the farm again. So Burka is the bottom part and Selenia is the top part. And that was the map bit. I do love it when the map, it's so exciting like that. It's so good to get that amount of detail. I mean, you can see, when we zoomed in, you can see the coffee plants. It's really, really, really cool. Um, so yeah, that made me very happy. Um, anyway, I'm gonna whap you on pause. I'm gonna go and get tasty, delicious drinks. And I'm gonna be back with you in around about five seconds. Okay, so I'm back. Chris has made the drinks for me today and he's been a bit of a comedian. He's put them in my ear brick cup and he's made the cappuccino in my ear brick and I have a Chemex uh, for my brews, so I'm diving into my... Uh, it is espresso, not ear brick. Now, I think this is going to divide some opinion on you guys. Um, I think some people will love it, some people won't. It's very intense. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this in milk, actually, for the first time in quite a while. Um, what you mainly get on this one is a, um, a licorice, and it's a very strong, very pronounced licorice. Um, but yeah, not a lot else. It really is kind of fairly simple in there. So I'll go to my, I don't know how I drink my ear brick here. And as I, expect, as I suspected, that because it's so powerful, it has such, so many base notes, it's such depth to it, it really does come through the milk beautifully. The sweetness of the milk with that very strong pronounced licorice kind of comes together and, and really does make it quite delicious. Um, I have a mug. Um, it's, I think, is it Pulp Fiction? I think it's from, yeah. Uh, this was from Roland and Roland bought me this from the coffee festival. Sorry if you're offended by swear words. This is some serious gourmet stuff if you were offended by swear words, but thank you, Roland. Um, I guess with my Chemex and with my Ibrick, I should talk through what actually happened at the festival. So uh, we'll start Friday morning when I did the Brewer's Cup with my Chemex routine. Uh, very confident, very well practiced with it. I was very excited to deliver it. I was really looking forward to it. Um, I had a, a soda stream on stage, which caused me no end of problems. I had to change plugs and all sorts to make it work, but made it work. Put the bottle in, locked it in, Fizz the water, uh, and the bottle exploded off the soda stream, poured water all over my prep table, poured water all over my plug sockets. I rode with it, it was fine. Um, ended up coming fifth out of the sixth, out of the six, uh, but I was only a handful of points off first. Uh, I'm very proud of myself for my first barista competition, riding with such a catastrophe. The whole room jumped when this bottle exploded. I mean, the whole room. Um, but yeah, I was, you know, I kind of, I, I, I felt I delivered on what I wanted to deliver. Um, I was a little nervous, but I, I, I think next time, you know, I might have another go at it. Um, we move on to the ear brick, which was a complete disaster. So my specialty drink, my cold specialty drink and my um, ear brick, both scored really highly. I was really pleased. Um, my hot specialty signature drink didn't go so well. Um, I ended up filtering the wrong uh, ibric and it just didn't work at all. Um, so I lost lots and lots of points. In fact, I lost all of the points for the hot signature drink. So I ended up coming fourth. Um, but again, lots of fun was had. Uh, I'm not sure I would be able to do the two. If they're separate times next year, I might I might do them. I, I, I would like to de dedicate more time to the ibric if I was going to do it. Um, Dale. Uh, our resident barista came second uh, in the UK Barista Championships. Very, very proud of him. Did an amazing job. Um, yeah, really knocked us out of the park. Did us all very, very proud. It has been. And um, yeah, he he was he was amazing and awesome. So anyway, let's get into this coffee. So this for me is where this coffee opens up a little more. Um, the licorice is still very dominant and it's very much there but you get like a real sugar sweetness. And what this reminded me of was like, you remember those pipe, uh, licorice pipes with the hundreds and thousands on, and I've used this as a descriptor before, but really fits this one too, because you get that sweetness, but you get that kind of 
unique taste of the licorice coming through. Um, I think it's a great, great coffee. Uh, it's really good to do experiments like this. We will be having a washed version as well, which we may see on in my mug some point in the future. Um, certainly not for the next couple of weeks, but hopefully you'll be able to do a compare and contrast against the washed. And um, yeah, I'm super proud. It's good, good coffee to have, good experiment to do. Um, the guys at Berka and, and Selena have really enjoyed this. Uh, they've really kind of uh, got behind it. Um, and I know that uh, the export, the importer was saying that he's going to send them the link to this video. So hi to everybody in the farm. Thank you for your amazing work. Um, we're very, very lucky to have a great coffee like this. So thank you. Okay, time to wrap up. Thank you very much for joining me, as always. And do remember, life is definitely too short for that.